I want to start out by saying uh, Happy New Year. <clears throat> Happy 2021. Boy, is that a big number. New Year, same God. New Year, same God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to start this new year by asking you a question. <clears throat> are you a good witness? Not just are you a witness, but are you a good witness? I want you to reflect on that as I uh, talk to you this morning. Are you a good witness? If you would, Heavenly Father, I'm standing in the name of Jesus, asking, Lord, that you breathe on me right now, asking, Lord, that you open up the hearts and the minds of your waiting people, thanking you for what you've already done, thanking you for being a God that hears and answers prayer. I pray, Lord, that you give me liberty to say what you have already said, that you help me to be plain, and then let your people receive it, not just receive it in the mind, but Receive it in that part that allows them to go out and be doers of your word. Help us this year, Lord, to grow as disciples, as a church and as individuals. Spirit of the living God, I'm asking right now that you fall on me. I'm asking, Lord, again, that you melt me. I don't, I don't take standing up here for granted. It is a sacred privilege. Melt me, mold me, fill me up, use me right now. Use me right now. Use me, Lord, for your honor and for your glory. In the name of Jesus, let all God's people say amen. amen. Are you a good witness? Are you a good witness? I think if I said, are you a witness, most people would raise their hand and say, yeah, I'm a witness. I I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, I go to church, but the question is, are you a good witness? Are you a good witness if you had to stand before a court of law? And if your life was the evidence of the existence of God and the power of God, would you be a good witness? Or would the attorney say, well, I'm not sure about him. He's okay, but he's not really a good witness. We need some more evidence to support the existence of God. Are you a good witness? Are you a good witness? Think about that. Are you a good witness? In the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I think it'd be okay to say sisters also, I beseech you, I beg you, I'm asking you, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In other words, present your life to God. We don't do Old Testament sacrifices, we sacrifice our lives. Present your life to God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. If it's reasonable, say amen. amen. And then it says this, and this is what I want to talk to you about today. It says, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Uh, why do I need to do that? That ye may prove, that you, mo you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The, the transformation is so that we can be good witnesses. The transformation is that, is uh, so that in our lives, we can prove that the will of God is good, that God is good, his will is good. And the only way I can prove that, Deacon Al, is to be transformed. I got to be changed. So let's talk about that. Psalm 24 says this. <clears throat> I'm going to go through a handful of scriptures. If you're at home, jot them down. If not, they'll be up on our Trinity website in a few days. 
Psalm 24 says this, The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Well, that's pretty much everything. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the whole world, and everyone that dwells in the world. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that God is sovereign. God rules all by himself. Thank you, Jesus. God is all-knowing. He is omniscient. He is all-powerful. He is omnipotent. And he's everywhere all at the same time. He's omnipresent. But in his sovereignty, he has allowed the existence of a prince of this world. Did you hear me? In his sovereignty, in his sovereignty, he has allowed the existence of what? A prince of this world. He's not a king because there's only one king and that's Jesus. But he's a prince with a little p. And God has allowed his existence. Ephesians 2.2 2 says this. Wherein in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Just take a moment and reflect on that because it's talking about you and me. It says in times past, there was a time. There was a time, you know it and I know it, there was a time when we walked or we lived according to the course or the patterns of this world. It says, according to the prince of the power of the air, according to his dictates, according to his words, according to his direction. And even though you and I have been changed and we no longer follow him or walk according to him, it says that spirit now worketh in the children of disobedience. Amen. Amen. You know as well as I do that if, you, if you're out there and if you're acting like a fool and if you're doing things that are inconsistent, disobedient with the will of God, uh, then that spirit, that princely spirit, that demonic spirit is now working in you. Colossians 1.13 says this, Who hath, talking about God, he hath, who hath, delivered us from the power of darkness. Thank you, Jesus. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us, has moved us into the kingdom of his dear son. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then in 1 John 5, 19, uh, it says, and we know that we are of God. We know that we are of God. Uh, but then it goes on to say, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Thank you, Jesus. I know I'm of God. I know you're of God. Uh, but what about the world? Well, the world still lieth in wickedness. Why do they do that? Because uh, Satan is the prince of this world. Well, tell me about the world, Pastor. Well, uh, 1 John 2.16 says, All that is in the world, all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It says, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Are you with me? Are you with me? All that is in the world, I don't care uh, what kind of mess you look at. I don't care what kind of trouble you see. I don't care what kind of wickedness it is. When you pick it apart, what you will find is lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is 
some prideful situation, there's some lustful situation. As God's people, we are in the world, right? We are in the world. We're in the dust bowl. We're, we're, uh, reminds me, is his name Schroeder or Schrader in the peanuts? The little dirty one? Yeah, it reminds me of him. Wherever he goes, there's dirt. There's always a little puff of dirt around him. Well, we're in this dirty world. We're in this filthy world. Uh, But we're not part of the world. We're not to be part of the world. We're not to be connected with the world because I just read to you uh, that in the past we walked according to Satan, but we no longer walk with him. We got a new master now. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Uh, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, 14, we are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. You know what salt does to your food. We, we are the thing that gives the, the earth life. We are the thing that wakes it up. Uh, not only are we the salt of the earth, but we're also, according to Jesus, a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. That's who we are as the people of God. Uh, First Peter tells us, that we are to be holy just like he's holy, separated from sin and devoted to his honor. We are to be holy. So we know about Satan. We're no longer under his control. We're no longer under his grip. We've been given our marching orders as to how you and I ought to be. Uh, well, so what is the problem and why do we struggle so much? And why is it that there's so many Christians that are witnesses but are not good witnesses? Well, you you know the answer. Uh, uh, Minister Lauderdale read it this morning. As long as we're in this flesh. You see, my spirit has been changed. But as long as I'm in this body, as long as I'm in this flesh, you got to understand that the flesh has one desire, and that desire is to be satisfied. The flesh lust, and the eyes lust, and my pride wants to be lifted up. My spirit is changed. I'm no longer those who are walking in disobedience. My spirit is changed, but I still got this flesh And because of this flesh, I have to fight. I have to get up and die to it every single day. If you listen to uh, uh, Dallas, Minister Lauderdale, if you listen to it, uh, what, what he said was even when I would do, even when I set out to do the right thing, a good thing, even when I get up first thing in the morning, uh, Deacon Allen say, I'm determined today to do this, to do this or to do that. Before you know it, I'm already doing something different. Amen. And so Romans 12. Verses one and two, specifically verse two, uh, tells us that uh, there is a tendency for us to conform. It says, be not conformed, which basically says, uh, there's a tendency for you to conform to the world. You, you listening to me, Brother Tony. There, there's, a, there's, a, it's, it's, there's a magnetic attraction for you and I to conform to the world. Uh, That because of this flesh and because of who Satan is and because of his desires, there's something about our flesh that causes us to want to be conformed to the world. And so Paul says, do not be conformed. Don't comply with the world. Don't go along with the world. He, he, don't, don't stay on the broad path. 
You, you know that that path leads to destruction. Don't stay on the broad path. Do not conform to this world. The instruction is do not conform. Instead, we are told to do what? Be transformed. You, you want to fight this flesh? You want to uh, disconnect yourself from the world? You, you, you got to be transformed. Uh, the, the Greek word is uh, metamorpho. Metamorpho. And it's where we get our English word metamorphosis. And if you were in church a year ago where we talked about the creation and looked at the creation video, metamorphosis is a change uh, in form. It's a change in appearance. And if you remember watching that video, how, uh, how uh, 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 a cocoon, cocoon, how a cocoon, becomes a caterpillar and how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. And the point is that everything that was needed to become a butterfly, everything that was needed to fly, everything that was needed to provide color was inside of the cocoon, amen. Uh, well, every single thing that we need to be good witnesses for God, guess what? It's already inside. Everything that you and I need to fight the battle to be good witnesses to his glory and to his honor, guess what? It's already inside. But we got to change. Uh, how do you know it's inside? Well, Philippians 1, 6 tells me, it says, being confident of this very thing, that he who hath done what? Began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you, are, are you confident? Brother Ed, are you confident? Are you confident that a work has begun in you? You got to be confident. You got to know that God has started something in me. Uh, if, if, if it's faint, look back over your life. You got to know that you're not, I'm not the same that I was. I don't talk like I did. I don't uh, think about the things that I did. I'm not preoccupied with stuff. I'm a different person. I've been changed. And the reason I've been changed is because God has began a good work in me. And I'm confident that he will finish what he started. How do I change, brother pastor? Well, uh, transformation begins up here. Amen. Amen. How do I change, brother pastor? Well, you can't change. You can't change. You can't change without changing your mind. See, if, 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 if the tendency is for us to conform, if, if the weight is on us to get off the broad path and to get on the narrow path, if the pressure is on us to go along with and to do what everybody else is doing, uh, then, then we, we got to be like those fish that uh, are, are born uh, in one place and they live someplace else. Uh, but every year they have to swim against the current upstream to get home. You ever seen it? You ever seen the swim, the fish? Uh, jumping out of the water and the water is pushing on them and they're jumping out uh, and they're moving forward a little bit at a time going against the current. Well, what does Paul say? Paul says that you and I have to press toward the mark. You know what a pressing is. We have to press toward the mark. 
The best analogy I have is uh, sometime when, when the wind is blowing and it's raining and you have an umbrella and, and you're, you're trying to get to where you're going and sometimes the umbrella is way down here because that's where the wind is blowing. But guess what? I'm pressing. I'm moving forward against the current and against the wind and that's what you and I have to do. Uh, but we can't do it without understanding uh, that this is the control center. Uh, we can't do it without understanding uh, that, that my logical reasoning happens in here. Uh, you, you can't do it without acknowledging uh, that my judgment happens here and uh, my morality, my moral awareness all happens in here. Proverbs 23 7 tells us that thoughts are things. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I'm saying? Thoughts are things. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, that's why uh, 2 Corinthians 10 5 says, that we have to take every thought captive and not let them build up because when they build up, because they're real, you end up with a fortress in your mind. Instead of a fortress, every thought has got to be taken captive to the obedience of Christ. You can't let them roam around in your head. And when they do, you got to say, who, who said that? Where did that come from? That's not Bible. That's not gospel. That's not helping me. Why am I thinking that? Philippians 2.5 tells us this. Let this mind, get rid of your mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let, let his mind be in you. What kind of mind was that? That was a mind of humility. That was a mind of commitment. That was a mind that was obedient even to death. Let that mind be in you. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, but nothing is ever going to change if you don't have a big enough reason to change. Amen. You're just wasting your time. If you don't have a reason to change, you're just wasting your time. I don't care how often you sit in these pews. I don't care how much Bible reading you do. I don't care how many pigeons you feed. If you are not committed to change, you are never going to change. Well, wh wh what are some reasons to change? Uh, number one, uh, you, you, you ought to look at your life and say, you know what? I'm, I'm more than what I'm living. My, my, I'm, I'm all right, but my life is not working. I need to change, and I've tried everything else. I may as well try Jesus. If that's not enough, think about uh, what you owe to yourself or what you owe to your children or what you owe to mama or daddy. Uh, is that enough for you to change? Is it enough for you to say, I want to live my best life so that my daughter and my son uh, and my grandchildren can live their best life so that I can be a good witness for God? If that's not enough, is it is it enough for you to say it's my duty to God to live like a child of God? If that's not enough, uh, does the judgment day move you to want to live differently? The fact that one day you're going to have to stand up before God and give an account for every word that has come out of your mouth. If that's not enough, uh, is it the fact that you simply appreciate what God has done? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me. 
Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. And because of all that you've done, I'm not going to be conformed to this world, but I'm going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And if all of that is not enough, what about just the love of God? What about just the simple fact that I love God so much that I'm convicted when I'm not walking in his will, that I'm convicted when I'm being disobedient, that I'm convicted uh, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and I'm ignoring him. The scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then it says this, that ye may prove That, that we prove, we're proving. You understand what I'm saying? When we are transformed, when we are transformed, we, we become the evidence. Are you hearing me? We become the very evidence of what? Uh, that the will of God is good and acceptable and perfect. Are you the evidence? Are you the evidence? Is somebody going to look at you and say, yeah, I, I, I believe. I believe that God's will is good based upon uh, the life that I see. I believe that God's will is perfect. I believe that God's will is acceptable. Uh, why is it good? It's, it's good uh, even when we cannot conceive it or see it to be good. That's how good it is. Even when something's coming at you, uh, Deacon Al, and, and, and it's bad and it's, uh, and it's frightening and it's something you don't want to have to deal with, uh, in time you'll see that it was good. And so that means that the will of God it's always good. Amen. It's, it's acceptable. Because when you recognize it as good, you say, okay, that's, that's, that's all right with me. And it's always perfect because what? It always achieves the desired result. Amen. Second Corinthians 5.17 says this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, I think it'd be okay to say if any woman be in Christ, he or she is a what? New creature. If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Thank you, Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's a new day. Amen. It's a new year. It's a new situation. It's a new challenge. It's a new opportunity. All things are becoming new in Christ. Everything is new. Nothing is the same. Uh, it, it's, it's not uh, just, just getting along. It's not being complacent. Everything for you and me is new. It's a new journey. It's a new path. It's a new chance. It's a new opportunity. Because we are in Christ, all things are new. We are a new creature, and old things are passed away. Ephesians 2.10 says we are his workmanship. You and I, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Amen. Made to do good things. Made to be good. Made to act good for good works. Uh, what kind of good works? Which God hath before ordained that we should do what? Walk in them. That my life ought to be about good. 
my life ought to be about righteousness. It ought to be about right living and right thinking. And then the last scripture, Romans 6, 4, tells us that we ought to walk in the newness of life. Trouble in your life? I'm walking in the newness of it. I see the trouble, but it's just taking me down a different path. I'm going up a different side of the mountain I've never been before. I'm dealing with a new challenge that I've never had to confront before. But it's all right because God is with me. It's all right because I'm a new creature. The question that I want you to think about, the question that I want you to meditate on, uh, the question that if you're not there, I want you to grow into is, are you a good witness? Are you a good witness? Look at your life. Look at your habits. What is your prayer time like? What is your time at home where you worship like? What is the time that you spend encouraging others like? What is your giving like? Not just financial giving, but giving out of your heart to other people. What, what, what is the use of your gifts like? Worship and study and pray and obedience. And then what about sharing the gospel? What is it like? Why don't you join me in starting the year 2021 and let's, let's try to be better witnesses. Let's try to be stronger Christians. Let's, let's, as the scripture says, let's not be entangled with the affairs of this world. No soldier entangles himself with the affairs of this world. Let's embrace the fact that we are different. That God has called us out. And let's walk in the newness of life. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for your Bible. I want to thank you for your guidance. I want to thank you most of all for your deliverance for all of us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to make it to a brand new year. Never been here before. Excited about seeing what you're going to do. Excited about one day joining the saints in the house of God again. And Lord, whether it's this year or next year or whether it never happens on this side, I know that there's going to come a day when we're all going to be together with you one way or the other, praising and worshiping you. I just want to say thank you, Lord. You are a, a wonderful God, an awesome God, a powerful God, a loving and compassionate God. Thank you, Lord. You brought us through a rough year. You're bringing us through this disease state, this pandemic. You wrapped your arms around us. Some have gone on home to see you, but some are still here lifting up holy hands. Help us, Lord, to walk, to live in the newness of life. Help us, Lord, to not be conformed, to not go along with the world, but to be changed, to recognize that we've already been changed. That you have began a good work in us. And you will finish what you started. Thank you, Jesus. Some are sick and troubled. Encourage their hearts and encourage their minds. Heal their bodies. Help them to know, Lord, on this day that you haven't forgot about them. That you're still in ever-present help. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to watch over us. 
Continue to dispatch angels to take charge over us. Continue to keep us strong, to keep us well. Continue to uh, build us up as soldiers in the army of the Lord. Look after our children growing up in this strange land. Look at our parents and grandparents, mothers and fathers. Help us, Lord. Be with us. Thank you for your reminder that you will never leave nor forsake us. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling to the one who can present us faultless before the glory of his majesty with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, thank you. Be, Lord, glory and majesty, dominion and power, henceforth now and forevermore. Let all the people of God say amen. Amen. Go in peace.